Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be talking about the idea of a pulsar planet. We're going to talk about whether it's actually possible to have a habitable world around a pulsar and whether any of the planets that we've discovered orbiting pulsars actually have something that might be considered to be habitable to humans. In other words, can we actually settle around a pulsar planet one day? Let's talk about this in more detail and welcome to What The Math. So in this video, we're actually are going to do two things. One of those things is I'm going to show you how to make your own very beautiful pulsar in Universe Sandbox completely from scratch and how to make it the way you want it to be. And then we're also going to talk about the idea of pulsar planets. Now, this particular planet is actually based on Earth and I'm going to bring it back closer and closer to the pulsar until you'll start see seeing a few really unusual things happening to this uh, somewhat beautiful object. And here at a distance of about 80,000 kilometers, a beautiful planet starts falling apart because it's now inside the Roche limit of this pulsar and due to the density differences, it starts falling apart. So this already shows you that there is actually a limit to how close a planet can be to a pulsar. But obviously they can have planets. As a matter of fact, in our previous video, I talked about three different types of planets that a pulsar can have. So check it out if you haven't really watched it yet. And uh, today we're going to be talking about the idea of a pulsar having a planet and the chance of it actually being habitable. So let's start by making a pulsar first as I talk more about this concept. I think one of the easiest ways of making a pulsar, at least in my opinion, is to take a planet, specifically a big planet, like Jupiter, for example, and then go in here and then in under materials, change its magnetosphere to some very, very large number. You don't really need to worry about what kind of a number, but basically make it big. And then turn this planet into a star. How do we turn a, a Jupiter into a star? Well, this is also from another video, but basically give it enough mass. I'm going to give it a mass of about... Oh, there's a Mimus coming toward it. I don't know where that, that came from. Uh, let's give it a mass of about two suns. It becomes a kind of a dark object. Not really a black dwarf, more of a, um, I guess, black giant? Mm, this doesn't really have a name. It doesn't really make sense scientifically either. But this is not what we're aiming for here. What we are aiming for is an object that is actually going to be um, pulsar-like, so we need to change its size. We basically have to have to shrink it, keeping its mass constant. Now, for pulsars and for neutron stars in general, uh, the common mass is anywhere between one to two masses of sun. And so here we just have to change its size. So we need to make it more like a size of a large city. So for example, 12 kilometers would be a good size to go with here. And as soon as we make this object into this and re-enable radius composition just like that it kind of becomes pulsar like and now just to finalize everything just go in here and uh, give it a super super hot temperature of at least a few thousand degrees and finally as soon as you see it being a star um, under the materials tab right here you'll find a button called make a pulsar as soon as you press that, boom, this becomes a very powerful pulsar and it starts pulsating and being all beautiful and stuff. Now, there's all obviously other ways of making pulsars, but I, I find this to be the most um, convenient way because that way I can actually make it look the way I want it and give it as big of uh, a beam as I want it to, to have. Now, in this video, I actually also wanted to talk about other um, pulsar planets that we've discovered and I guess the most famous ones are around pulsar known as PSR B1257 plus 12 also known as Lich. I've talked about this pulsar, pulsar in one of the actually many of the previous videos and we know that um, Lich has at least three planets. We used to think it was five but now we think it's probably three and these three planets orbit at a relatively close distance as a matter of fact um, I think it's between 0.2 astronomical units and 0.5 astronomical units but not close enough to actually fall apart and so if we were to place them here somewhere they would probably be random rocky planets at a distance of 
about 300,000 kilometers and somewhere over here as well. So these three planets uh, do have names and uh, we currently refer to them as Draugr, which is uh, the smallest planet we've discovered so far at mass of about 1.6 to possibly two masses of the moon. There's Poltergeist with a mass of about 3.9 masses of our Earth. And lastly, Phobitor with a mass of about 4.3 masses of Earth. These three planets are actually far enough um, from the pulsar to not really receive much visual light. As a matter of fact, you probably will just see darkness here. But they do receive a lot of other energy. As a matter of fact, a lot of really, really dangerous and highly radioactive energy. So pulsars are known to actually, once in a while, release uh, these kind of wind-like formations that actually move... Um, at the speed of light almost. So you probably missed it because I released it really fast. There was a blink right there and it's actually kind of hard to see. So maybe I need to make uh, the game a little bit slower so you can actually see it. So right around now there's going to be, there it comes. There's that pulsation. So this is called pulsar wind and it's very, very, very highly energetic particles that hit um, the planet's around this particular pulsar at a high, super high energy. And this can actually completely, and you can kind of see it right there, this can completely um, strip the uh, planet of atmosphere and anything else on the surface. So pulsar winds are actually one of the more dangerous things that these planets can experience. And that's on top of other um, energy that is constantly emitted from pulsars, including, of course, the X-rays that are coming from the surface of this object pretty much non-stop 24-7. And so when these particles essentially leave the pulsar and when they arrive to one of these planets, they hit the surface of the planet and we can maybe simulate this with an explosion of a random, really, really small asteroid going really, really fast, basically at the speed of light, uh, or almost at the speed of light. Let's just give it about 90% speed of light. I'm going to launch it at Draugr, and basically try to see what happens when a tiny particle actually hits it. And so nothing really happened just now, because this was a tiny particle, I made it only a few grams um, in mass. But essentially, if you have a lot of these particles hitting the surface of Draugr, you would expect something crazy to eventually uh, occur because the amount of energy released from those particles hitting the surface is going to be tremendously large. So over time, it will actually adapt and probably strip the surface, at least the surface uh, facing the pulsar, from most of the things. So if there is any water, if there is any atmosphere, it's probably going to be completely scorched. Now, if this object is actually uh, tidally locked, the other side will be just fine. This side, however, will probably face quite a lot of energy that will destroy anything that's trying to survive there. And so every time any of these particles come to the surface, they'll actually even produce gamma rays uh, because of the collisions with the surface. And gamma rays are extremely, extremely energetic and can actually uh, quite easily kill anything on the surface or uh, basically destroy quite a lot of organic and uh, inorganic matter. However, if this planet by some unknown chance is a super Earth, like actually these two are, these are very, very massive. They're a lot more massive than Earth, uh, Earth um, and they might even possess very thick atmosphere. In this case, especially if they're actually far enough away, like both Poltergeist and Phobitor are pretty far away from, uh, from this star that's known as Lich. In this case, uh, their atmosphere might actually survive for a very long time, because if the atmosphere is thick enough, which we're, we're going to do right here by creating very, very, very thick very strong atmosphere similar to i guess a gas giant so you can kind of see it here in this case any particles that decide to collide uh, with this planet will probably get dissipated by the upper atmosphere and the lower atmosphere might actually instead receive a lot of heat you can kind of see that happening right there i don't know if you can see it but the surface of the planet basically gets irradiated but the insides will just get warmed up and instead will generate conditions that might even be favorable to life. Obviously, there will be no light, but there will be energy coming to the surface simply from the particles striking the upper atmosphere. 
So because of this, we actually think that both uh, Poltergeist and uh, Phobitor might still actually possess um, atmosphere. And as a matter of fact, it might be very, very interesting atmosphere that we've never seen before because they're far enough away from the central uh, region of the neutron star, which is somewhere right there. And they're probably actually full of atmosphere uh, that will be able to survive for quite a long time. So because of this, every time this planet absorbs um, a variety of uh, materials that actually strike its surface, including, of course, the pulsar wind, it will very, very likely end up being warmed up and create a kind of unusual livable conditions underneath all of this stuff. And this might actually be true for even the inside part on the other side of the planet, of course. In other words, the heat here might be generated by the interaction with the upper atmosphere, which would be a very interesting way of developing a habitable planet. And so what this would actually suggest is that uh, this type of um, unusual habitable planet would be very different from what you imagine a habitable planet to be. It would actually be um, very highly pressurized. It would be very, very dark, or completely dark as a matter of fact. Um, and it would have a lot of thick black fog everywhere. Uh, the gamma rays and x-rays would not be able to penetrate the upper atmosphere, but they would be able to warm up the surface and create a lot of heat on the inside, relatively safe heat on top of that. And so the whole atmosphere here uh, would be in a kind of a very unusual non-optical, probably ultraviolet or infrared light. So if there are any unusual life um, sources here, they would probably all be dependent on non-visible light because there's almost no visible light coming from the actual neutron star. And so in some sense, the conditions here are actually kind of similar to the conditions deep inside our oceans on Earth. For example, Mariana Trench has conditions that might be comparable to what you see here, except, of course, they don't really get gamma rays and uh, x-rays. But um, creatures like barophiles that actually live in extreme pressurized conditions and that actually do love heat uh, would actually strive here quite easily. They would love these kinds of conditions. So finding life here is not an impossibility. Think of tardigrades, those uh, unusual water bears. They would love to live here. And so in this video, I actually just wanted to talk about the possibility for neutron stars and pulsars to have habitable planets. And hopefully this video kind of clarified that it's actually quite possible. And as a matter of fact, uh, the life here would uh, survive quite easily simply because these uh, unusual planets would have very, very thick atmosphere. Anyway, come back tomorrow to learn something else and subscribe if you still haven't. Share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and wants to learn their video games. And uh, consider supporting this channel Patreon to help this channel grow. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Let's run this a little bit faster and to see what happens to this beautiful planet. Space out, and as always, bye bye.